uh, realize that the previous site plan, um, the previous site plan on record was from 1986. So they asked for a new site plan to be, uh, uh, to be drawn up, which we did. Uh, I was here in January, um, and there was some, uh, had a continuance because there were some issues that had to be addressed um, for some of the other department members. So I'm back having, thinking that I've uh, satisfied all their, uh, all their requests. Okay. Uh, is there anybody in the public that is uh, here for this project? No? Okay. Um, all right. Let's go through the comments then. Um, project review has no additional comments beyond submitted by other agencies for this project. Uh, Office of Building, Zoning, and Planning. Um, has three. Uh, Jane, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. On number three, it says no accessory structures are permitted in required yards. That little lean-to, mm -hmm. is that considered an accessory structure? Yes, it is. I have a photo of that if anybody's interested. Yeah, because we all went and we saw it today. Oh, okay. We're just uh, concerned about that. Uh, I know Mr. Peters has some concerns about it, that it's in the right of way. Um, and, but I think also um, there was this talk about it that they may have had a previous permit for that. We did not see that. If they have one, I don't have record of it at this okay. point. Um, it's it's covering the dumpster. By no, correct? this is the one that's no. sitting along the stream right that has the, the smoking area, has a little picnic table in it. I'm pointing it on the screen right here. This one? Yeah. 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 That's it. That's if it was in the right of way, it would not have gotten approval. Because that's a shame to see them move. I mean, for what it is. Well, yeah, we, they we can put go it there. The, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. They can go for the variances and try to obtain approval. Okay. But you know, I, I had to uh, we'll see, you know. bring it to the attention right of the board. Okay. We, I can't approve it as is. No, no, no. I understand. And it's in the right of way. And I know Mr. Peters is a little upset about that too. So. Correct. Um, okay, let me move on. Uh, Department of Environmental Management and Engineering um, has six items. Do you have a copy of all these? Uh? I do, yes. Okay. I'm not going to read each one into it because some of them are just today. Uh, Booker Engineering um, says that we recommend that the 526 Route 303 site plan be approved for drainage at this time subject to no comments. Jimmy Dean has a comment uh, pertaining to no parking permitted in the town's right of way and Glenshaw Road, which is a town road proposed parking lot, no parking in the town's right of way. Then I have the minutes from the past meeting. And anything else, Cheryl? That's it. All righty. Mr. Mendel. Couple of things. Um, okay. Uh, well, first, is this step property currently in court to the violations, or no notice of violation has been issued so far? No, other than the site plan review before you. Okay. Now, uh, Rockland County Planning and uh, Orange Town Highway both uh, state that there's no parking on the northern parking area that approaches on Glenshaw Street and must be re relocated. That's 29 spaces. Uh, what is your plan to relocate and move from that location? Um, we didn't have a plan. We were hoping, since it's a pre-existing condition, um, that uh, we could get a variance or, or, I don't know. I mean, if we have to move it, we could always move it to the south, I suppose. But we were hoping to, uh, to leave it as is, since it's pre-existing since 1990s. <clears throat> Well, I'll just uh, well, tell you. Is it probably the county plan? You have to override. What, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you up front. Uh, I won't override it if you want to ask for an override. It should be moved from that location. If I don't see a pre starting a precedent here where we're going to let somebody walk on the right of way, uh, even if it's, it's there, there was no permit in the first place for that uh, parking out onto the street, and it's got to be moved. If we don't move it for them, we'd have to move for numerous other locations. So. If That's, I can respond, yeah. I, 
and can refer to legal counsel, but I don't think the board has any jurisdiction to permit any type of building within right. a right of way right. or an easement. Yeah. Right. Why right. don't we get override the county? But who was the other one that had to be? Uh, highway. 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 You, right. Right. you can't. I you can't override, right. you can't override the highway. And I won't override the county on this either, even no. if we were permitted to do it. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. And again, it was done without a permit by the prior owner, but that's the whole reason for permits, because if someone came in with a plan like that, we would say, you're not permitted to do this, and they would have shifted it before it was built. Same thing with the, the lean-to structure that you referenced before, Mr. Chairman. It's, that's the purpose of permits, is to make sure that the building is in compliance. Yeah, just a recommendation. You know, you're looking to move spots. Uh, you should take a look maybe at your uh, east side facing uh, Route 303. I think you have uh, quite a bit of distance there that might be uh, amenable to you to put parking spaces in there to comply with the uh, mm -hmm. with what's required. In the front yard on 303? Well, it can't be in the front yard setback. Right, 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 because we got the 303 overlay plan. That's what I'm saying. So, Correct. Yeah. So his site engineer will have to look at that. It yeah. could be over towards where the old building was, right. that area. They got a couple hundred right. feet there, possibly. Right. Yeah. They could back up to the uh, parking that you're currently out of there. Could I just move it to the south where the, the it's indicated in green? Just, just shift the whole thing down. Which, and that's the way the parking lot was originally, based on what the updated plan that the engineer submitted. This area was paved and was removed. Graveled. Or graveled, okay, I'm sorry. But this area was removed from the parking and put over here. So, yeah. Probably so easier just to move it down. So yeah, that could move be. It down. The red is what's encroaching on the. Uh, yes. Right. That's correct. That's you wouldn't have a problem with that, Miss That's not a lot. No. That's not a lot. <laughs> no, I would not have an issue with that. Uh, the calculations at this point by the engineer that were provided, which are on your um, plan, show that they actually reduced mm. the amount of paving. So, as long as they stay below their amount that was previously approved, then they're okay with drainage. If they increase this amount that yeah. was previously approved, then they have to go for yeah. the full drainage review. Another drainage review. Yeah. Okay, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Young? Um, I'm in agreement with Mr. Mandel on the, uh, uh, the waivers. We're not going to give you a waiver on any of that this evening. Uh, that's all I had, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mark. So he would need a, uh, they would need a preliminary to go for the variance? No, no, not for the variance, for, uh, I think he needs to receive it. Don't they need, he's, he's going to he's gonna have to ask for the they need anything for anything? They have to go to ZBA for? At this point. You said for a lean-to, they could go to ZBA, right? We need a they can go that route. Again, it's right. in the right-of-way. Right so he chooses so to do, or he can remove, right? It's in the right of way, so it's going to be very difficult right. to obtain any approvals. Right, it might be just to remove. Right, agreed. Right. So, okay. So if the applicant would like to relocate it, then they should come ask for continuance to come back with a plan showing it relocated and showing the adjustment to the parking. Okay. Yeah. So that would probably be the, the route you need to go is to ask for continuance and make those changes so you form with the site plan and, uh, and then we can move forward. Right, right. Anything else? No, that's okay. Mr. Dell. Yes, I don't think there's any intention of this board to act anything resembling an impediment to what you want to do, but I think there are legal requirements, and I think we have to be a little bit more comfortable with this, at least myself, before we can support it, particularly in view of the members, other members of the board's comments, and what Ms. Slavin was stating. So I'm inclined to agree. I would suggest strongly that you ask for a continuation on this item so that uh, these items can be resolved. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, a little clarification. If he agrees to move the parking lot where it's out of the right of way, mm -hmm. and he also agrees to remove to move the lean to, um, does he? Do we still have to continue, or can we give him a preliminary? Well. If he or, intends to remove the lean to completely, then he would just be continued and come back with a new site plan. If you want to assist him in moving forward, 
and he agrees to remove the lean-to out of the right-of-way and try to go to ZBA to have the accessory structure, you could do that as a condition. Correct? Don't you need new plans for the repair? I mean, what, what correct, but that, that could be adjusted as far as you could approve the moving of the pavement back down during right. Right. his and resubmission for final. If he completely, then we can approve that. Also. Yeah, and then he can right. go to ZBA to ask to put it somewhere else. Well, if he doesn't want to put it somewhere well, else. Well, that's, I mean, that's up to the applicant. Then he can move forward. Yeah, that's, that's up to the applicant. That's basically what he's asking. For. Yeah. Right. If I mean, he agrees to move the parking and remove the lean-to, yeah. then he could conceivably move forward. Correct. But if he doesn't address all the yeah. if he does not address all the comments on resubmission for final, right. then he would be able to obtain final. Okay. Mr. Bell, are you agreeable with that? I'm still having, I'm still considering it. Okay. I just think it's a slippery slope when we start doing these things. Yeah, But over the years, I've seen that we've uh, been told one thing and then another thing ends up on the submitted plans. So I'm not saying that anything about this applicant. I think it's a situation that if we start allowing that and that encourages well, that sort of thing, as a condition, we'll get it less. He, he has to fulfill it in order to come back to the next stage. So if it's not done at that point, he can't go any further. No, I understand. If it's the majority will of this board, I will, I will go along with it. Okay. But right now, I'm having okay. well, uh, where, where are you? Where are you on that, sir? I mean, what's it's your it's walls in your court, basically. So. Sure, yeah. And, and uh, obviously, we want to do the right thing also. A lot of this stuff is pre-existing from, from when we had the building. So we're trying to get this right. Um, so I don't, I don't think there'll be any objection to moving the parking. Um, and I think for now, we would move the structure just so we can move forward with this phase of... Uh, I think you have you to remove... Re remove. You have to I'm move sorry. Completely. I, 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 if you, if I misspoke. If you're going to move it, then you need to ask for continuance and go to the ZBA. Right. Right. Correct. right. We would remove it at this point so that we could go forward with the, with the planning board and then submit uh, additional building... Uh, submit for a permit to build a to new structure a in a somewhere new location. Else. Okay. Right. So okay. that would be our that would be in our case. Intent. I think we have to go to the. So right. even if you were right. to do that before the ZBA meeting, you'd be able to put in a revised plan indicating that, right? Oh, I'm sorry. What's a ZBA? Mean? That's zoning board. board. You going to the zoning board? Yep. Well, right. If I can, I think the applicant's a little confused. Yeah. So <laughs> the accessory structure, the yeah. lean-to is not permitted by our code. Okay. So, so you know, in your yards, it's not permit, permitted in the rear yards. Right now it's in the yard and the right of way. Okay. So at minimum, you'd have to move it out of the right of way and you'd have to obtain ZBA approval for the, it's called an accessory structure. Okay. So right now it's, it's not permitted anywhere. Correct. Right. I'd have to go to the zoning board. Okay. So Correct. I, you know, I'm, I can't speak for our management team but I would, I would recommend to them that we just leave it down and just don't put it back up. We'll just have to come up with another area for the smokers in the, in the company because that's all it is. It's just a place for them to smoke so they don't get rained on or, or whatever. But uh, it had previously been just outside one of the doors. People would stand there and the butts would get on the ground and it would be, be kind of a mess. So we thought we'd do a a good thing and, and put a structure up, but apparently we were doing the wrong thing. So that's what I would recommend to our, to my management. Okay. Michelle, do you have anything? Nothing additional, just, and I'm, I'm fine with uh, approving it or pushing it forward with the understanding that the applicant's going to make so these changes before coming back. I guess the question is, do you want to, if you need to speak to your management team, do you want to just go for continuance and then come back and well, the options, my options would be go, get a continuance, come back, or agree to do what we just said, and then... Agree to remove it completely, and then you'd have to come in with a whole new application if you wanted to rebuild that wherever, correct? Or... You have to come in with a whole new application anyway. So either way, I'm coming back here. He's got to come no? back anyway. Right. Yeah. So it might a be... A continuance may be your might yeah. be best yeah. course of action. Then you don't have another, another fee and all that, right? Correct. Like yeah. I'd like to move on if you can't, you know, if the board agrees. Mm -hmm. No, it, it, it continuous may be the best course of action. Continuous might be the best. Okay. Yeah. The new plans. Yeah. Right. Then the applicant has the opportunity to revise the parking, has an opportunity to discuss with management how they want to handle the lean-to, mm -hmm. if they want to completely remove it, 
or if they want to make it part of this application and show what the new location would be. Um, question if I could. Do I have to have plans to move the parking or do I have to move the parking before I come back? No, you have to have plans. Don't do any work on the mm -hmm. site without <laughs> approved okay. plans. Right. So just, just have the plans and then I can come back. Right. And, right. and the plans right. will have to show where you're going to relocate Understood. that. Yep. Yep. structure or if you're going to remove it completely it's got to be off it completely okay well at this point you have to completely remove it because you don't have a permit for it so the new plans would show the revised parking and if well i don't think he can even go to zba until he comes back with the revised plans correct that's probably the best course of action right. so he can address right, all yeah. the comments right with management come in with the revised right. plan showing how they plan to remedy the outstanding issues right right and, and then, then you, if honor, they you, you could put a proposed site for it mm -hmm. and then we would you know you would go to zba to get their their approval okay okay sure so are you asking for a continuation uh, I'm, I'm asking for a continuance i don't know when the schedule is or when you're going to be able to get back on Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. There's no need to go public. No, there's no need to go public. You asked for it, right? There was no public. Yes, there was none here, right? The plans are very helpful, so you're going in the right direction. Okay, next so item you, which, which is PV 18 25, the learning experience site plan. Okay, very good, thank you. Please, uh, whoever is part of the project, are you going to come up front? You got to sign in and come up to sit at the table. Sit at the table? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a microphone there. She's been here before, you know. She could have been to the yes. location. No, it's the rest of the team, too. Right. That's because the recent presentation was to the town board, so it was used to. Yeah, yeah, she was the town board, she was there. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe just so that, you know, instead yeah. of turning around. Do you have a business card? Ladies in the back, are you interested in this pro this particular project? Because if you are, please move forward. There's a lot of seats. You can move forward so you can hear better. Okay. Their hearing is good. Okay. <laughs> They're going to clap for us at the end of the presentation. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, Geraldine Tortorella of Hockerman Tortorella and Wexstein of White Plains, and we're counsel for the applicants here this evening. With me are Matthew Jarmel, who is the architect with Jarmel and Kazell, the architects for the learning experience, Justin Lim from Leonard Jackson Associates, who's our civil engineer. We also have in the audience uh, Nathaniel Burns, who's with Langan Engineering, and he's functioning as our landscape architect on this project. Uh, Dr. John Collins, who's with Mazer Consulting. He's our traffic engineer. And also Al Rossi is in the audience. He's representing the applicants. He's their personal representative. So we're here this evening, uh, back in 2015. Do, do I have, can I? It's on my oh, computer, no way to do so it? Okay. just tell me what, what you would like. So, so the site that you see here uh, in the aerial is this is the stop and shop building and the area with the blue star on it is the site that we're talking about tonight for the learning experience. Back in 2015, the board had granted site plan approval for an 18,000, about 300 square foot building that was going to have a combination of retail and service and food uses in it. Um, and it was approved as a mixed use expansion 
which was complementary to the larger Orangeburg Commons project. And the idea behind the mixed-use expansion is that it was really approved and to be developed as, as a, a functionally integrated project with Orangeburg Commons. And by that I mean we would be having shared utilities, shared access, parking, signage, things of that nature. And you evaluated the site at the time and you approved the, the shops, what we called the shops at Orangeburg Commons or the shops building. Subsequent to that, uh, we were approached by the learning experience to be able to utilize that site for a single occupancy for a child daycare center. Now, the property is in the LI zoning district, and child daycare is a permitted use in the LI district, but it's not among the permitted uses in the mixed use special permit project. So we went to the town board and we obtained a text amendment from the town board to add child daycare as a permitted use in a mixed use development. And the town board granted amended special permit approval to allow a child daycare use on this site and in, in a complementary fashion to the Orangeburg Commons site. That approval for the special permit followed an environmental review, a coordinated environmental review that was conducted by the town board at the conclusion of which it adopted a negative declaration. Now the special permit approvals from the town board were subject to us getting amended site plan approval from this board because there are some changes to the site plan as a result of the learning experience development and that's what brings us here this evening. We're here for that amended special permit approval. Um, in terms of the site, so you know and if you've been out there you, you might have noticed it, we actually were able to pull a building permit for this shop's parcel. And we have commenced construction. The, the site has been excavated and graded. Uh, curbing has been installed. The retaining wall in the rear has been installed. If we can go to the site plan itself. I think it's the next drawing. We have uh, installed the sewer line. The drainage structures have been installed on the site, and this is, again, this is the learning experience site plan. So this is the retaining wall that we're talking about. Uh, and we have also installed curbing around the site in the parking area. Um, no building has been, we haven't started any vertical construction of any buildings, obviously, because it wouldn't make sense to do that until we were to come back before this board and see if we could obtain amended approval for the learning experience building. The reason we have both the owners of the Orangeburg Commons site and the owner and ground lessee of the shop site before you this evening is because, as I mentioned, there's a, a functional integration of the two sites. And so we are going to be making very minor changes on the Orangeburg Commons site. And they really involve some of the, this parking here, which is in the front of the learning experience building, is actually on Orangeburg Commons. And there are easements that allow cross use between the, the, for the parking and other utilities between the shops parcel and the Orangeburg Commons parcel. We're making uh, some slight changes to this parking. We have added this walkway. So that was two parking spaces before. And we're adding signage in here, having to deal with drop off and pick up for children. That, that parking is going to be reserved for parents dropping off their children and picking up their children. And then we are also um, making some other minor modifications to this area. But other than that, Orangeburg Commons will be staying largely the same as it is currently. This site plan is very similar to the site plan that you approved back in 2015 with the following exceptions. Uh, the building that you approved was 18,300 square feet and it basically followed this outline. Now we are proposing the daycare center building that's a little over 10,000 square feet, and then abutting it is an approximately 5,000 square foot playground area. And in a few minutes, I'll ask Mr. Jarmel to just explain more about the building and the function and the layout of the interior. Access is the same. You come in around, the, the, the circulation is the same. You come in, you have two-way traffic on this side of the building, and then Right along the back, you can exit. It's one way here, and you can exit out to Greenbush Road here. 
the main access would continue to be the access at the traffic light on Stevens Way. But as you know, there are two ways to get into the, to the Orangeburg Commons site now, and that, that is existing, and that's not going to be changing at this, at, in connection with this application. We also have, uh, besides a smaller footprint, we have uh, parking on the site. We have on, on the site, the shop site, the, the learning experience site itself, we have parking here and along the rear. We need 39 parking spaces under your code, and we are to able to provide it. 17 of those spaces are on the learning experience site, and then the other 22 are on the Orangeburg Common site in this location, and then also parking down in this location here. Now, if you look at the two sites together, the total amount of parking that's required would be 631 spaces. We are able to provide 713 spaces between the two sites. 57 of those spaces are land banked. That's a, a technique that we've been using with these sites because we didn't have an actual need for all of the parking, but we wanted to be code compliant or able to be code compliant. Uh, but even if you deduct the land banked parking spaces, we still have more than 631 paved parking spaces, which is the minimum of what we, what we are required to have. Um, the approved utilities at the time that the shops was approved in 2015 are going to be sufficient to, to service this building. But we will have less impervious area, but we have not proposed any changes to diminish or reduce the stormwater management uh, practices that were approved as part of the shops. So in, in some respects, we are over-designing for stormwater. Uh, so there's no concern with respect to that on the site. Um, as I, if, just the next page, if we can, please, Jim. So in terms of, just to remind you, I mean, this retaining wall was there before, and again, that's constructed. We're going to have a four-foot high fence that goes along here, and we are maintaining the 20-foot vegetated buffer along the rear, which, again, is something that you had approved previously. We are looking to add to the pylon sign panel, just the panels. The structure will stay the same. It's been approved in the past, and I know this board doesn't approve signage, that that's an ACABOR item, but just so you know, we have provided you with a sign plan that shows the learning experiences, panels that will be added on that. And of course, there'll be wall signage on the building itself as well. Um, we had taken a look at how this change affects traffic and, and traffic impacts. Um, and we have submitted to you a report, a letter report from Mazer, which was also submitted to the town board as part of its environmental review. Basically, the conclusion is that there are some times where the peak amount of traffic differs between the retail and service and food uses that were part of the shop's approval and the daycare center. But when you look at the projected traffic at, that is, was supposed to be developed just by the Orangeburg Commons site itself, we are under, we, we have less of a parking, less of a traffic generation from the, the two sites combined than what was originally projected from Orangeburg Commons. And so therefore, the mitigation that we implemented in connection with Orangeburg Commons was deemed and concluded to be sufficient. We are not looking to make and not expected to make any additional changes or traffic improvements because none are warranted as a result of that analysis. And that information is provided in the package that we submitted to you. If I can just let uh, Mr. Jarmel talk for a few minutes about the building itself, uh, security operations, and tell you a little bit about the learning experience, and then we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Excuse me, could you speak into the microphone, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, good evening. My, my name is Matthew Jarmel. I'm a registered architect, um, and I'm what I'll call the preferred architect for the learning experience for the last 15 years, actually 16 years. And in that capacity, I've designed well over 200 centers for them around the country. Uh, the learning experience provides uh, child development services, uh, play, play with the words, so it's basically a daycare center. It's open from um, Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. They currently have about 230 centers operating throughout the country and about 160 in various forms of development. 
Altogether, they take care of well over 25,000 children every day. So they, they're a pretty sophisticated operator with uh, very specific systems, and they have a very sophisticated curriculum as well. Um, one thing I like to emphasize to boards when I testify before them is because sometimes there's confusion with how a child care center operates. They operate very differently than a public school or a school in that they're designed to cater to the needs of working parents. And as a result of that, parents are allowed to drop off and pick up their children really any time they, they like. So where a uh, public school may start at 8.30 in the morning and all the parents are kind of coming over maybe a 15 minute period to drop off or pick up the children, at the learning experience, this will happen over really a two and a half, three hour period in the mornings from about 6.30 a.m. to about 9.30 a.m. And our traffic engineer can talk a little bit about when we see a peak hour uh, within that time frame. But typically you see parents coming uh, maybe six to eight at a time maximum. They are required to park their car and walk their children in. The age of the children in the facility are as young as six months uh, to about five or six years of age. Uh, so the parents will park. They, there's a very uh, sophisticated security system. If you notice on this plan, Properly. There's a vestibule. The outer doors to the vestibule, glass, glass doors in and out, so you can see through them, but the outer doors to the vestibule during business hours are open. The inner doors are locked. Parents are given a key fob, so parents can enter the facility, but if any of us wanted to go in and we didn't have a child enrolled, we'd have to be buzzed in. There's a reception desk where they're greeted, and every there's a screen at the reception desk where e parents have to key in their child's ID. And at that point, uh, the facility takes responsibility for the child and takes them to the classroom. Uh, that process, we've timed it in other facilities. It's about a five to seven minute process for a parent to park, walk their child in, and drop them off. Some interesting statistics that we've learned through operating these centers is that about 10% of the children will be siblings. So they come in this, uh, I'm sorry, about 10% of the children will be out sick every day. So there's about a, a reduction in, in enrollment, and about 25% of the children are siblings, so they come in the same car. Uh, so you see kind of like a further reduction of trips, and I think that our traffic engineers' reports and studies don't, don't account for that. But once you're in the building, it's basically a school. Uh, there's a central corridor, and off of the corridor are classrooms. And classrooms are designed in accordance with the state of New York's facility standards for child care, uh, which set both uh, caregiver ratio or teacher to student ratios based on age group. They set square footage ratios based on age group and maximum and minimum group sizes based on age group. So if uh, you would scroll to the kind of lower right corner of my drawing, you'll see a licensing chart. And that licensing chart depicts that this center would ha has an estimated uh, occupancy in terms of license capacity in terms of children of 150 and that would require 24, 24 caregivers. Um, ideally, if they were to fill to that, they would have all, that, all those children and all that staff there. Typically, they're a little bit less than that. It takes some time once they open, depending on the time of year, to, to ramp up to occupancy. Uh, but all these charts will identify the room name, toddlers, twaddlers, infant, the state required square footage requirements, the net square footage of the room, and then calculations as to the ratios per children and number of children in the room. The way the center gets licensed, it actually has to be approved here uh, by the municipality, issued a building permit, built, and then the, once it has a certificate of occupancy, the state comes in and uh, does an inspection and actually sets the final occupancy. So we do expect it to vary slightly, maybe within 5% of the numbers I'm sharing with you. Uh, Safe facility. It uh, has sprinkler system throughout. It has a closed circuit TV system throughout. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going back to the floor plan, please. The corridor walls also all have windows, so if you're walking down the corridor, you can see into the classrooms and see what's going on. Uh, it's classified as a uh, both an educational group and what's called an institutional group under the building code, which basically means that the occupants, children less than two and a half years of age, fall under this institutional criteria, don't have the, either the physical or mental development or capacity to exit the building on their own. So as a result of that, you have to build in a lot more safety features into a building like this than you would a normal building. For example, you'll notice that every room has two means of egress. 
uh, either to the corridor or directly outside. So the code requires that any room with 10 occupants or more have, uh, have two means of egress. All other use groups in the code are 50 people before you have to have two means of egress. So there's a lot of doors in and out. All the exterior doors have alarms. If it's not in the front of the building, for example, doors in the rear of the building or the side, there's a low fence of four feet high that's there so that if a child opens it, they can't just go running out into traffic. And those lead actually to a playground. And if you wouldn't mind panning to the left. So the playground is a little over uh, approximately 5,000 square feet. This is where in the original approval there was building. So we've reduced the size of the building. One of the ways uh, we've picked up pervious areas because the playground servicing is pervious. It's a combination of poured in place rubber and turf, both which allow drainage and water to flow through them, but they provide adequate safety and fall protection. It's divided into two sides. Uh, we call one side an infant and toddler and the other a preschool. So there's an age appropriate uh, play equipment based on the age of the child. There's a six foot solid fence uh, it's, a simul it's a vinyl fence, but it's simulated to take on a lo wood look uh, that surrounds the playground for safety and a visual block and a noise block. So one, children can't see out and be distracted by what might be going around on around them, and two, people can't see in. Six feet is a great height because you can't reach over a six-foot fence and pull on a child out, which is a, which is a good thing. Uh, you'll also see that there's some picnic tables, and those picnic tables are covered by canopies. Canopies are there for, for shade protection. Um, and unless the board has any questions of me, that's essentially my testimony this evening. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mandel. Good evening. Good evening, sir. <coughs> I want to know, is, uh, has the, uh, have you gone to, to get the uh, Sewage Works Corporation uh, set up? Yes, we actually set, excuse me, set that up quite a while ago, and we'll provide you with proof of that. We were at the project review committee last week, and uh, Mr. Peters had raised that, so we, we had indicated to him we would provide it, and I also saw a comment to that effect from one of the county agencies, but yeah, that the, has been formed, yes. Yeah, the Department of uh, Environmental Health brought that up, that's why I was asking that question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I'm looking at the map, I'll refer to page 2A on the, um, on the plans. Now, I'm looking at the legend, and uh, eight, uh, eight inch concrete ballast. Now, I'm looking at the actual mapping around, uh, I see you have large dots, you have small dots. Okay, I'll go on the west side first. You have uh, small circles. Uh, is, it should sh is it showing on the blow up there? Is that page 2A? That's 2A. Okay. Are you talking about these? That's the legend. Is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, I'm Mr. talking Mandel? to that legend. Yeah. You have that little dot there, eight inch uh, concrete ballot? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with the uh, west side going closer to the railroad tracks. There are little dots there. Are those all ballads? Yes. Uh, those are all, all eight inch uh, concrete field ballads. Okay. Those are the ones that are in the middle of the uh, fire zone? Or are those the ones that are along the fence? It's, it's, it's located within that three, uh, three or six foot area. Um, okay. So it's, the, area. so it's the ones between the uh, building and the outer line of that no parking area? Am I correct? Yes. Okay, it's the ones that run right along there, and along that way. Okay. Now going to the uh, the south side of the project, we have uh, <clears throat> we have large. I'm trying to find the ballads there. Then. South side. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that was no. Yeah, that's the that's east the, side. That's the west south. side. Mm -hmm. south that's side. the south. Yeah. Yep. There you go, south side there. Right. Which are, are any of those uh, ballads? Uh, yes, uh, those are ballads, uh, but on top of the ballads, we're putting sign up there as well. You know, similar construction for the ballads, except for um, before we fill with concrete, we're going to put the, uh, the sign post up within the concrete and, and eventually put a um, sign on top of it. 
Okay, so it's still going to be an eight-inch concrete ballot yeah. with a sign. Yes, yes, functionally in. similar to a ballot, except for there's a sign on top of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, these circles are different sizes. That's why it was a little confusing looking at it. So we're talking about the ones that are directly along uh, the side there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, right next to the parking. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Those ones there. All right. Uh, going to the uh, now to the uh, east side. With a concrete, uh, all right. Are all those also uh, ballots along there too? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm trying to see where well, you have the uh, the uh, the no parking area adjacent to the handicap spots. It says DC. What are those uh, structures? Uh, oh, those there? are drop curb uh, for handicap uh, access. Oh, it's, okay. it's a ramp going right. up from the parking level to the sidewalk. All right. And what's the width of that? That is, I believe, five feet. Four, five feet, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. I was just wondering if it's, uh, if it's a car could shoot through there. Is that a possibility? Oh, that width. Um, yeah, that, that's possible. That's wide enough. Yeah, so is there a way of putting a, a bollard at the uh, end? Yeah, we may put that a wouldn't or put it or we could put a planter in front of it, a, a, you know, a raised planter on the sidewalk. Yeah. So functionally, it's similar to the ballot, but... Oh, no, that'd be fine. Uh, yeah. This way, the handicapped person still get a wheelchair around right. there, yet uh, nothing could drive through there. Right. Okay, okay so you put so a... Put that, that would be a condition, and you put a planter in front of those two uh, walks there, correct? Yes. Okay, and I'm looking, looks like the rest of the... The building um, has ballots, except for now, uh, looking on the, uh, let me see, that would be the, hold on, north side, which would be all the way over there. Uh, <coughs> do we have anything along that last section? That would be all the way to the right, I would imagine. No, I'm sorry, I was making those. <laughs> okay, there we are. Uh, what do we have up along that section there? Uh, so you have bollards all the way uh, along the no parking strip on the back end. No, so those are actually the posts for the chain link fence surrounding the building. Okay, right in front of them is the uh, bollards, correct? Uh, on that sidewalk up there? Where? there. That would be the west side. Yeah. Okay, now come down to the north side. That's the chain link fence there? Yes. Yeah. All right. And that's a solid wall except for those emergency exit doors there. What's the wall construction here? Right. Solid. Oh, that, that, that's the building wall. Yeah, okay. Right. That's the building wall. And then you have the fence outside of that, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All righty. Thank you. And uh, just one other thing. Uh, um, Rockland County Planning, and I know it's not a requirement, uh, was this something of interest? Uh, you know, there, 0.7.1. They were wondering uh, what uh, what materials are you going to incorporate uh, and what features to help reduce the noise associated with the trains. Uh, I'm particularly uh, interested in along the uh, outside play area. There's something that's going to be put in there to reduce the noise. Uh, um, I, other than the fencing and the landscaping, uh, nothing nothing in addition. But you know, I'll point out that the, the train is actually elevated above our site, so noise does travel in a spherical direction, yeah. but because we're lower than it, the, the, the topography by itself will provide some, some attenuation, plus we're, we're providing a landscape buffer between the rail and the retaining wall, and then there's a retaining wall of, that's fairly high that further drops the site. And then we have a solid fence around around the playground, which will act as a as a buffer for noise. Okay, and the wooden fence that's above the uh, above the um, retaining wall. Is that a wooden? Four foot high wood fence. Okay, is that going to be a solid fence or slats or? Yes. Yeah. Solid. Solid. Yeah, we're flexible in terms of it. It says with posts. And, uh, but we can make it a solid fence. Yeah, it just uh, might might reduce the noise because it is up higher, and I guess it would be, it's almost the same level as the tracks, right? 
fence? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. And it goes only a partial way, that fence, right? Yes. It, it's really for safety purposes above the retaining wall. That's the idea behind it. Right. So it provides that yes. kind of security right there. Okay. And, and why the doesn't it down over here. Why doesn't it extend the entire length? Okay. You know, just just to remind you too, we do we are planting this vegetated buffer too, so that will provide some sound attenuation. Oh. Is there a fence at the other end on the left side? Yeah, on the, the right side. On the right side, there, there is. Fence stops. There's a fence that goes to there. So why don't you just continue it? Make them meet, you know. Yeah, um, no, vegetative buffer is nice, but it still doesn't prevent people from. Retaining wall is runs right through. And how high is that retaining wall? Uh, it varies from about uh, five feet where the loading dock is to about three feet. Mm -hmm. I raised the retaining wall during the construction of the site to make it uniform, to look more attractive, to give us a better presentation, uh, and to provide a uh, reduced the slope that was there. So if you went out of the site right now, you'll see a retaining wall that runs from uh, yeah. military base they used to know how to do this. Uh, <laughs> it runs from about here right. all the way across to here. Okay? And over here, what is over here, to make it more attractive to get a better landscaping buffer between the hotel and here we're putting a berm. There's really no need for retaining wall if you went out there. The berm on the hotel runs this way. Uh, right here is the berm. So we're just extending the berm down to here. So if you went out of the side, you see the berm over here. And the retaining wall runs this way. It's a better presentation and it takes it to uh, reducing the slope so we can get Where better landscape. gap in the fencing? Where the fencing I'm sorry? The gap. The, the gap. The, fence the gap. Is there and it's there's a retaining wall right. right here, right through. So we need to update the plan. So to we'll reflect that. The plan at the, at, at the final. Sure you'll, you'll run the fence the entire yeah, perimeter. Yeah, there's no reason not right. to run that's, the fence along okay. the whole that's, back. Yeah, that's my question. Okay. We'll run the <clears> fence <throat> along the whole back. Right. Yes, the plan needs to be updated to show those changes. Yep. Yeah, we will. Well, they'd have to be updated before you go to Akabor. Oh, that's all right. Oh, good. Because Akabor will, will prove yeah. that, you know, have to review that and prove it. Yeah. yeah. No, um, no further questions for me at this time. Thank you. Thank Can you, Mr. Lindo. I know I've taken things a little bit out of order because I know the board members have a lot of questions. We can always uh, read the consultants' reports and, you know, when we're done with this, but I know the board members have a lot of questions. I have one real quick question before I forget about it. On the concrete sidewalk, what is to protect either end? Just the curb. Here. Take right here. Either end. It looks like it's just yeah. just the regular curb there. Mm -hmm. I think you may want to consider putting two big planters, a planter on either end. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We're proposing that we're going to buy these big planters for landscape and irrigation. So there will be planters to uh, improve the, the landscaping effect uh, in the park and certainly to address your concern about the, the gap right. where the handicap is. We'll put a planter there and we can certainly add a planter at each end. Because we're, we're basically concerned where somebody gets a car on that road with the uh, kids, okay? So if we can block off any way that you can get a vehicle up on it, I think mm -hmm. we'll make Maybe the board I'm very happy. Saying. <laughs> okay, that's all. Um, Mr. Young, go ahead, please. No, uh, it, we'll put. We could put a planter here. And we, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, large potted plant planter here. We can put one here and here, and we have some across here just to put some landscaping element along the sidewalk. Both ends of the building. Both yeah, ends of the building. We could do that. North side too. And right yeah. here and here. Yeah. It's not a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Young, do you have anything? Uh, no. Um, no. I'm, 
you've blanketed the entire perimeter of the building, which is what most of the board is looking at here. Um, the fence to the west was my concern, that gap. Um, obviously, there's nothing you can do with the trains, but that's, um, I think, uh, between what Mr. Mandel and what you've covered, I I'm fine. Mr. Bond? Yeah, I don't have any issues. Mr. Dell. Yes, uh, hold on. Yes, um, a number of things. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit um, to Bruce Peters' comments. Is number two. He says imperious area coverage. I'm sure he means impervious. Yeah, I haven't read that many yet. Okay, I just want to make sure that's yeah. caught because I don't know to what extent we're going to go. First of all, I think I want to commend the applicants on a very thoughtful plan, and actually I would expect nothing less from something that General Rossi is affiliated with. I've known him for many years. However, there are a number of issues that I have. First, let's start the handicap spaces. If you have one handicapped employee, I think you're going to have some problems. I would suggest that you increase that to be five rather than four. Would that be a problem? No. Yes, okay. I, I assume also, too, that you're going to have uh, substantial video surveillance in this site? Yeah, there'll be cam there will be cameras throughout the interior and exterior of the building. Okay. <clears throat> Next, having reviewed plans for this town since like 79, which is quite a while now, um, I've seen a number of playgrounds come in, and it's always been a good suggestion uh, if landscape architects are involved in those areas, because sometimes they tend to resemble rec yards which is obviously not the connotation that you're after. Are you having a landscape architect or someone familiar with this? So, so I, des it? I designed it and, and I've built this playground over 200 times throughout the country in a very, very similar math method. All right. Well, it's typically, hard to see what you don't doing. like to put plantings within a playground because it's actually a hazard for no, children. No, but there's mounding. There's other things you mm, could do. And also hazards. These are these are very young children. Some of them don't walk yet. And the playground is designed. There's actually a national playground safety code okay. that that the, the the playground is designed in accordance with. So it it's got fall protection. It's got rubber turf. It's got it, it's I'm sorry. It's got rubber surfacing that's cushioned around the play equipment. It's got turf, which is simulated grass, so it doesn't die and it doesn't, uh, you know, weather, but it allows water, water to drain through it. All the play equipment is certified by, by manufacturers. No, it's got sh it shade go protection. Than that. Right. I just, so. just in general, well, having had some. So. And, it's, and it's fenced in. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, what about the kids? I think they're yeah. going to see it. Yeah, but but the anyway, the let's, the I just want to move on from that. Now, the major concerns. Um, I'm very familiar with this area. I've lived here all my life. I remember in 1962, directly uh, on the tracks from where you were, there was a rail car that was hit and twisted like a pretzel. Uh, we used to have the tank farm, which is uh, to the north, and that was protected by uh, a wall to keep anything from happening. We know the speed of the trains. We know actually what they're carrying. I don't think that's any secret. I really question the wisdom of putting a daycare center in this particular location. Now, you might say statistically it's fine, but that's kind of like playing lottery uh, with children's lives. I'm not really comfortable with that. This is not political. Everybody loves their children, but I would feel very uncomfortable moving this forward as it's situated in this particular site. I feel that it's inappropriate, and I feel that it's taking long-term and unnecessary risk. Now, you could say, well, we have statistics to prove this. Um, on that, I don't know if it's a risk that I feel that we should be taking. It's a great plan. You seem to have done a wonderful job on it, but you are downhill, downhill from the railroad tracks. I've seen derailments, and when, when there's a good-sized derailment going at the speed these train cars would be going at, they would spread out for about 100 yards in all directions. And I just think it's not a risk that I'm prepared to uh, approve as a town planner. I also question also, too, the fumes 
from the railroad coming by. I don't know what sort of air purification system you have. But the main thing is um, I think it's not the wisest way to go to choose this location. The other members, of course, may disagree with me, and I certainly respect their opinion. But I, for one, remain unconvinced. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dell. Ms. Yost, do you have anything? No, I'm comfortable so long as the safety concerns are addressed um, with regard to vehicles. Um, I'm not sure I'm showing your safety concern. I do think that adding that additional fencing up there, you could move the, the, land, the, the landscaping is extensive. Um, I'm not sure it's even, anybody's walking that way. You shouldn't be walking that way anyway. Code. But no. Okay, thank you. Um, sure. This is just a rhetorical question, I guess, to Dr. Collins. Do you, do you factor in train traffic in your studies at all? Um, I'm just, yeah, I, I didn't think so. I had to ask the question. But, uh, you know, how many trains travel through there during the operating hours would, but that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me read the consultant's reports and, and, of course, you have a copy of them? We do, and I just had a comment with respect to one before Okay, you, one as we get to one, one, if you have a question, we'll, uh, we'll talk. Thank Project you. review has no additional comments. Uh, James Slavin, Officer of Building Zoning and Planning, uh, has four uh, items. Okay, the, um, Bruce Peters, Department of Environmental Management and Engineering has 11. Okay, and Mr. Dell, you, he had said that he wanted me to mention, so let me have that one Number two, one of his comments. Number two, the applicant's engineer shall submit sign and seal calculations to demonstrate that the previously approved drain is designed to, to treat stormwater quality and quantity is adequate for the current revised site plan. These calculations shall also include a revised impervious area coverage calculations and a comparison to the previous adopted site plan impervious area coverage. I'm sorry, can, which, what were you reading from? The Bruce Peters, oh. number two? Oh, come, yeah, yes, okay. we understood impervious was impervious. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Brooker Engineering says we have no new drainage comments for this application. Uh, the Rockland County Department of Planning, uh, they recommended with three, three conditions. Can I? Oh, I'll take it back. Seven. Seven point one, actually. With respect to this, the first, uh, number two and number three on Rockland County Planning, one is a review by the New York State DOT and one is reviewed by the Palisades Interstate Park Commission. I mean, they, they make this comment with respect to every application on these sites that, it, to the extent that any of those reviews right. were ever they required. Were, they were notified, Joe? Oh, yes. yes. Right. So and we have received we nothing from, from them. them. Okay. Right. okay. And then just, just to, to be clear, they made, um, they weren't recommendations, so to speak, but they were just, um, I, I guess, making a suggestion for consideration in seven. In 7.1. Yeah. 7.1. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you to do on that one. No, they're putting a. I know. A vegetative buffer, the fence. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah, a recommendation. It's just a recommendation. Yeah. So don't put it in there. Yeah. Right. Oh. You missed the information. I read that in, Mr. Dell. Yeah, it's really, it's actually, they, they do. Well. Fairly characterize it as a comment and not even a recommendation. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Rockland County Highway has no comments. Um, Rockland County uh, Environmental Health. Um, they do have this one issue. Uh, prior to this department issuing a certificate of approval. Uh, proof of the formation of the above-mentioned cor corporation along with the engineer's certific certification, which is to be included, include lines and manhole test results, is to be submitted to this office along with an as-built drawing to the sanitary sewer system. 
the town of Wardstown should not release any CFOs for these properties until the certificate of approval has been released by this office. Okay, no problem? No problem. Okay. Uh, Rock and Dry County Drainage, uh, they have no comments. Uh, Jimmy Dean has a memo that says the Learning Center site plan or plane, 1 Stevens Way, Warrensburg, needed two do not enter signs at the driveway, one way out, entering Greenbush Road. Okay, I'm just, I'm just putting this, this, okay, I'm just putting this in. Okay, and we have New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And it looks like they don't have a problem with it either. And they, I have... Um, they had one comment, if I could, okay, before you move past the DEC review letter. Um, just so that we don't have confusion when we come back um, for a final approval. On cult under cultural resources on page two, they, they make reference to the fact that they it were within an area considered to be sensitive with regard to archaeological resources. Um, I mean, we've got Camp Shanks Park right there. We've got the Palisades Interstate Parkway. I'm not sure what they expect from us. This is an already disturbed site. Uh, it, had, it was used for mining, and it had, it had a residence on it. So I'd like not to have to do anything with respect to cultural resources. We, it's almost, you know, been there, done that. We've, we've visited this issue several times in the past. And I'm not sure why it's coming up now. It's, I believe it's a boilerplate comment yeah. from yeah. them. Just Chair, yes. a point of information. It used to be Orangeburg Pipe, right. and then became Flintco. There was never any mining here, but there was, in that particular area where you are, that's where the uh, pipes were stacked when you were drawing houses. No, not on this site. This, this was the house was, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. This, this, this was house. where they did the Nine, sand uh, gra uh, gravel mine, the sand mining. Uh, um, okay, I don't recall that in the 60 years. But it's okay, it doesn't much matter. There was soil, I'm sure, that was removed at one time by the contract. Just, uh, you reminded me of something I neglected to mention, and I, I think you might be interested in it. We were asked uh, when we got the shops approved to put a plaque up on the building with respect to this being the Adam Lent House. And that was approved by ACABOR in consultation with the Historical Society. And that is on the building. It's shown on, on one of the drawings that yeah, we I have, saw, the landscaping I drawing. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure we didn't uh, neglect to mention that. We, we didn't forget about that. Okay. So are we going to do anything with the cultural resources or just let it go through? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we also have um, uh, County, County Health. Say we're, the, we're the lead agent. County uh, Health and CBA, CBA lead agent. Okay. Cheryl, anything else? Yeah. Okay. I do. I have one more comment. I know this is not germane to this specific thing, but it's kind of pertaining to the whole site. Um, when Lowe's came in, um, I had a big concern with, a, uh, with that grade crossing, because I know I was almost in an accident there. Um, I had suggested, and I don't know who <coughs> I suggested to, if the town can do it or we forget about it or what, is to make that a one-way going eastbound so that it is impossible for somebody to get caught on those gates. Because um, I was following an old lady, I went over the tracks and she stopped and there's a train coming and there was cars coming on Western Highway, she would not move. So I think that might be something that the town could maybe look at of possibly doing something like that. We're gonna have more traffic going over the road uh, with, with the children. Uh, I think if, if they go through the town, they're gonna, that's going to be the easiest way to go. You're talking about the crossing, the train crossing? Yeah. Yes, the grade crossing. Yeah, the one yeah. Isn't that an by the railroad? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they, they, they've had, been what trying they, to do improvements on the railroad for, God, I've been up here 25 years. They've no, 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 I understand that. I understand it, but I brought that up the last time. I know it's not germane to this. It's just a, a source of conversation is what they did is they put two stop signs. 
So you have to stop before the tracks, and then you go over the tracks. But if you watch it and look at it, people don't. They just go over the tracks. So I, I don't know what to do with this. I, I personally, I have an issue with it. Again, it's got nothing to do with this project. It's something that the town should look at of possibly correcting. Mr. Warren, there is a traffic advisory board. You could send that concern to them. It's their responsibility to look at issues like that then coordinate with the town board to see if anything can be they, done. I thought they'd looked at that in the past, but I, I think ever, they, I think they, they yeah. did. They yeah. did. I brought it up the one time because I wanted to make that one way, right. going east, so you couldn't get caught on the tracks. And what they did is they put the second stop sign, which really has done absolutely nothing. So the, pro the problem is still there. Like I said, it's not part of your issue. It's part of our issue for the surrounding area. So. Mr. Chair? Yes. Make a suggestion? I would be in favor if you were to write a letter on behalf of the board to the powers that be to address that issue. I don't know how the other members feel, but then at least we'd have something that would carry beyond the video to me. I'm terrible at really other like business. Could you please do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> Delegation of authority. I pawn these I things off. Video. I'll second. <laughs> 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 Did you get relief in <laughs> the, the dais? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You want it coming <laughs> east only? Huh? East only? Yeah. East only. One way, east only. <laughs> this way you can't get caught on it. If the gates come down, so you're coming off Western Highway, so you only get one car there. Well, Orangeburg Road is completed now, yeah, so yeah. it's a possibility. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I concur. Yeah, no, right on. No, right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. We have the answer right before we read it. Okay, so. Mr. Chairman, it's feasible yes. now. They finished the work on Orangeburg Road. That was one of the problems they had before when they wanted to make it eastbound only, was that the construction on the overpass there could hinder uh, response by emergency vehicles. This was prior to them doing the construction. Right. This is when Lowe's went in. No, and this is after Lowe's is in, and they just they completed that overpass there on the CX uh, CRX line. So we'll see what happens. See if we can get it done. Get the hand raised in the back. Okay. There's a hand raised in the back. Hmm? A hand oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Please, oh, please uh, stand. Okay. Motion. I, we have to open up the uh, motion public open. session. Um, public portion. Motion. I'll make a motion. Motion. Mr. Mandela opens up. Please, ma'am. Please All come up. Right. I'm sorry. I get talking and I got carried away. Please step up to the microphone. Uh, step up to the microphone, please. State your name and your address, please. Gail Raffaele, and I live in Tapia, New York. I was born and raised in the town of Orangetown in Orangeburg, New York. And I want to make a comment about this action that you just took. As a resident, lifelong resident, I oppose your requiring me to go out onto 303 to return to my house if I go to Stop and Shop or if I go to Lowe's. That's not right. Uh, Route 303 is much more dangerous than that intersection that you're afraid of. If you have concerns about people violating the law by going through the stop sign onto the tracks, you should register that with the police department and maybe they can do something about it. But to inconvenience me, because you're afraid of the intersection is not right, and I know a number of people who are on this side of the tracks that feel the same way. They feel that our of Route 303 is much more dangerous than that intersection. And that's just the comment that I'm making to you. Thank you. Because you live off of Western Highway, you would be able to cross that grade course. And, and then I'd have shop. to go home by Route 303. Right, you can't go back the same right. way. So you can't, you can't go I back can't go same. back the same way. What they really need is gates. Yeah. Just, you know, the gates that come down with that. They 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 I understand they that, but they exactly took an so action yeah. that was not on the agenda, yeah. and, and that's why I wanted they to make the comment. Focus. We need to deal with the applicants. We need to deal with the applicants. Correct. They, they have the gates. Yeah, we. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else have a comment about this? Okay, hearing none, I'll make, uh, I'll make a motion. motion. Close, 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 public. Second. Mr. Bond, second. Mr. Mandel. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. All in favor. I made the motion. Mandel, second. All in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Okay. So, where are we going, guys? Preliminary or pre-preliminary? Preliminary. Preliminary. Okay, we're going to do...
Okay, can I have a motion? For, or we have to do uh, lead deck. Lead agency. Lead agency. I'll make a motion for lead agency. Mr. Bonner. Second. Mr. Mandel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Neg deck. Neg deck. Motion for neg deck. Mr. Mandel. Or second. Mr. Young. Second. Mr. Bond. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. One, one opposition, Mr. Uh, I'll make a motion Adele. for, uh, what is this in for? Preliminary? Del opposed. Preliminary with, with conditions. Preliminary with conditions. Bond. Mr. Bond. Um, before we forget, uh, we're going to put those planters on the sidewalk, just so we don't forget that. Um, fence along the west. Yeah. 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 Front of the two handicapped spaces at the north and south end of the sidewalk. And the applicant agreed to, right? I assume they agreed to the end of the handicapped spot? Yes. Okay. And, and fencing. So right, that's solid fencing. Yeah. Solid fencing. Solid fencing. Yes. That would be the addition. And a planter on either end of the sidewalk. Yeah, we'd say yeah, north and right. south, yeah. plus in front of the two handicapped spots. Okay. Well, it'll be three handicapped spots. Three. Three. Right? We're going to add another one, right? There'd be another opening, I'm assuming. Right? No, that's handicap. Then they're not going to read it. Fence. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, the handicap go back to where the uh, where the employees work. Yeah. No. You're going to be because then you lose a spot in front yeah. if you put another handicap in front. Of something. Here? What, what if you put it all the way down the end of that? You prefer yeah. Right there. Put that. Make that handicap right okay. there. Okay. You can put it here. Yeah. North end. Okay, you put yeah. it wherever you want. Just you just have to have access to the sidewalk, and you need a little planter. Another planter. That's, plant to that's where you got plenty of room right there. That's put the other one there. Yeah. You got that. Uh, so you can have that planter. Yeah. So we'll add a ramp. Yeah. The, the space, a ramp, and a planter in connection with the fifth handicap space. Correct. Correct. Because you you wind up move, removing one of those ballots for your ramp. Um, okay. Building office zoning and planning, James Blayback has four. Department of Environmental and Management and Engineering, Bruce Peterson has 11. Book of Engineering, nothing. County Planning has 7.1. But we're not doing there. But we're not doing comment. one, so it's just seven. Yeah. Right in your additional comment, we're not doing. Was there an additional comment, uh, a suggestion that we're not going to? Yeah, we don't have to override it. We don't have to override it. We're not going to put it in. That's just a comment. Yeah. That they put it's a right. comment. Yeah. It's really yeah. six. Okay. It's really yeah. six. Okay. Yeah. Highway has nothing. Um, the Center for Environmental Health. They're concerned with the Sewer Works Corporation being formed. Okay, so that is one of your conditions. Drainage, they have nothing. Uh, Jimmy Dean has one uh, one uh, comment. Okay, I think that's it. Anybody else have anything to say? No. Okay. I need a second. Second. Mr. Young, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Mr. Dell opposed. Okay. And we can go now with that. We can make our application to Acabor, or do we need to refer us that no, over? Yeah, can I think you go to Acabor. However, all of those revisions yes. need to be shown, mm -hmm. as well as the retaining wall revisions and the fencing and the style of fencing. Yep, absolutely. Very good. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Okay, thank you. It's been easy for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's approved. Yeah. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. It's a preliminary. Yeah, come back. Right. Let me know. They got to come back. Safety and security. That's the only concern. Oh. Oh. Okay. It's right here. It's already approved. All right. Uh, Rockland Plastic Surgery. Jane, other, we got other business? Yeah, Rockland Plastic Surgery. It's a revised sign. Yeah, they just want to relocate the uh, the sign out of the easement, right? We don't have any problem with it, right? 
they're taking it out of the easement. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have a problem with this? No. I think no. Bruce Peters has already approved uh, the location of the new sign. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah. We have to. And what about what about number one? The uh, <coughs> that's by uh, that's above the. Um, Housing, uh, I mean the apartments there. On uh, is that the request to zone change? Is that number number one? The town board reference to the lead agency? No, no, no. We're on the sign. Oh, okay. I thought we were done with the sign. <laughs> no, I think the applicant's here. No, no. I, I thought we just said the sign was okay. He's relocated. <laughs> He's got to go. Go. If I've been lived closer. I'd be in shorts right now. You, yeah, I don't know how you keep in your jackets on. Well, just two crazy ones. Yeah, he's taking so it out. So caught it yeah. and said it had to be moved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they moved it. They're just showing you the revised. Okay. So Basically, it. this is the only location that it's we can install this on. <laughs> and we didn't have an engineering drawing. Before. Is it up yet? No. <laughs> it's always on. No, you actually you did. We but you did Mr. the Peters first time. Did you not. Did. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah, right. No, it's fine. Correct. So I'm Mr. Sure Peters picked it up yeah. based on overlaying maps, and mm -hmm. the applicant revised the drawings accordingly. Okay. I have no issue. Yeah, no issue. No issue. No issue. No issue. All right. Thank you. I usually don't. Nobody even comes for these. <laughs> these other business okay. things, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Much. Thanks. Thank so number one is that's the uh, that's the request for more apartments. Is that what that is? They want to put more apartments. In there. Seriously, Brandon. Which one is this? Yeah, the town board, the zoning districts, Memorial I mean, Highway. They want, they want to hit 106 yes. apartments with a uh, pool correct. clubhouse that would be between the current club and Blue Hill. Oh, with the same with the ceiling, are they both the same venture. It's uh, the same it's owners, but two it's separate and distinct size. developments. Yes. Will they be able to? The club use the amenities in the other one. No, as far as I know, they're yeah, separate. It's a it's, you know where Blue Hill is? Yeah, there's probably a the two buildings. There. And the first, if you're going up there from here, you make a left into the first entrance driveway. Right. It's going to be just south of that. So it's that area that's all wooded now. Is that where you'll enter area? into? It's the one that, it's it's one that has all the signs that are posted in front of us. Right. right. Yeah. You will enter into that complex off of the Blue Hill Road. Right. Oh, we, we proved a ceiling fan company there years ago, didn't we? No. That's p I'm part of that property. Hunter. We did. Hunter, Hunter, Douglas, Hunter Douglas, but they Hunter never Douglas. Douglas. No, it didn't, That never went through. No, no but, we, but it was approved. It was, yeah. it was here. It originally, case is now in yeah. it originally came in uh, both pieces across Orangeburg Road from each other. Originally came in as one application. And I'm sure Cheryl can talk to And this piece was pulled out of that. And they went forward with the rest of the Yeah, I think there's 10 acres on the left side. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So right now it's just for lead agency. So, so they'll, be for the, they'll be, have to gonna, come before you for... The property will abut that other property, correct? That's where it starts? I mean, where they, where they built the apartments there now, where they end, and you start the woods going up towards yeah, Blue Hill, right. it's yeah. going to be that, yes. that whole piece there, or there's still a parcel that's still commercial? There's a, there's there's a, a parcel that separates it. Yeah, there's, and there's a parcel, too, that the uh, original club uh, deeded that's going to stay the same, and right. they're not building anything on that. That's right, already right. been asked. Right, okay. And the reason, too, they want to build 106 apartments is they have a waiting list of 150 people currently. Uh, just a general thought. We have a lot of this senior housing. The one thing that disturbs me about it is very few of the, uh, the units are on one floor. So they're only going to be there for a number of years, and then they got to basically be moved out. If some of these units were single floor, I think you'd have people being able to stay there. They still the time. really go off topic. Right. The club is a rental, so yeah. people right, but it's once they get to rentals, right? that no. level, they're going to move on. And I think this is the same thing. This is going to be a rental. I understand yes. what you're saying, but how are we going to tell them you can only do it one is a floor? rental? No, I don't know if we can, but I just wanted to say it's, yeah. it's a concern that I have. And we always and call them senior matter of fact, um, they're not. Well, this is a town referral, the, right? The, uh, yeah. the rental And they want, lead, they want to be the lead. They can be the lead. They have elevators. The, the club zone, now right? has, yeah. has, they have elevators. So you elevators get to the second floor. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I'm assuming this will be the same thing. Sure. Now, what are they doing between the club and then the Blue Hill Towers? That's going, is this what we're talking about, this piece of property? No, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's all posted now. So yes. Right along. Left, you're going up the hill. The first left, you can make it to the blue hill. Right. And that rotation this way. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'll have to draw. You're going to draw. Yeah, the request was for town board to be the lead yeah. agency because right. it's own change. So you're going to get into that off of opposite where you get into the Hilton. Get into the Hilton. If you're going towards Orangeburg, you make the left Correct. into Hilton, you can make the right into Blue Hill. And then Correct. You if you're going towards there, Orangeburg. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, no so, again, the development of the piece of property still has to come back. Correct. This is just lead agency <laughs> so that the town board can review and make a decision for the zone change. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No comments. No I have no problem. Anybody else? No, no, no problem. No. So, okay. you actually have to vote on do you agree that the town board should be lead, lead motion agency? Motion right. that the town okay. board be lead agency. Okay. okay. Mr. Mandel Great. makes the motion. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. This yield seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Carried. Do I have a motion to no, close the meeting? Oh, wait, I'll we got two minutes. You sent me an email. Okay, I, I had sent Cheryl an email pertaining to uh, Celtic Steel where I read it real quick. She said it was in Jane's comments, but I, I kind of wanted it to go into the regular comment where they're, uh, we want to know what their hours of operation were. They had put down six to six. Right. And I think Mr. Uh, Brenner said, no, we have, we have two permits. We have longer, so we go. But I want to leave that in, that they have to satisfy that. Right. We're That's the way we left it, that yeah. they had to satisfy the previous approved right. hours right. of operation. Right. And yes. if they violated it, we would issue uh, the appropriate Right. Violations right. or yes. summonses as required. Yeah. Yeah. And we should mention the specific hours we were referring to in that if we're writing it. Yeah, because because they had they had. Well, I'd be careful about referencing the specific hours. You should reference the specific decision. Right. Just, yes. Just, just, just so you don't have a typo, and now I have two separate hours I got to deal with. No, no, no. Just take that and put that in part of the memo. Take that actual number out and the whole thing. Right. You should just reference the previous. Ratified decision. But if you reference it, you don't. I think you can reference it and also take it and just cut and paste it and put it there. Is that a problem? I, I think it is because okay. there's been many errors that I found. So I prefer to have one space okay. where it says these are the hours of operation. If I have multiple documents that reference the hours of operation and each one states the hours, and something is, the, is an error, right. okay. am I correct? Then the if they go to the court. We have a problem. Right. Right. Okay, I had sent, Cheryl had sent me the, the uh, minutes, and I sent back, I said, uh, didn't we ask as to what hours of operation was? I think that the performance standard it states from 6 a.m. to 6, through 6 p.m., and I believe J Jane was going to check on it. Other than that, there was no addition. Cheryl sent back, and if you guys uh, 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 approve this, the director of the Town of Orangetown Building, Office of Building, Zoning, and Planning Administration and Enforcement shall reveal the applicant's hours of op operation mm -hmm. and, if needed, shall dir direct the applicant to make application to the Orangetown Zoning Board of Appeals for per performance standards review. Right, and didn't they imply, they implied at the meeting that they had approvals? He said they Some type that, of approval yeah. that showed it. Well, they do, right. otherwise they could not have ever received final from this board. Right, right. right. So if they're in violation of their hours of operation, no, I have two courses the... of action. I can make them go back to the ZBA right. to amend <coughs> their performance standards, <coughs> or I can issue them a summons and send them to court no, for violation. They, the, they already had the approval. They can apply what they want. Whatever yeah, that decision, what saying, I, uh, whatever yeah. that decision that was stamped and recorded is what. Well, you're saying that you don't see that anywhere. No, when we. Had, I didn't say that. I didn't have an opportunity to go back through right. well, a couple a couple six. years back, like fifteen or sixteen, and read through that. But we will. Right, right. So they they could have. It. That's what I'm saying. They right? could. They but could. there was a photo. We need to copy. clarify. That's, that's exactly. basically what it was that. So yeah. what? But the way I understand understood it at that meeting was you guys were moving them forward with that caveat that if they are violating the previous <coughs> approval of the hours of operation <coughs> that I have the authority to move forward and enforce it. Right, if right. They, don't, if they don't have, yeah, they don't have. And if they don't like that, then they'll, right, if they don't like that, then they're going to have to make back. new right. application mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to right. amend those yeah. hours. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. there was, in their application, the paperwork that we got, there was a photocopy 
of their performance standards, and on it said six to six. Mm -hmm. So that's why the whole thing was brought up. You know, this understood. is understood. And again, and they implied they had more, but we don't. Mr. Brown may before. have recalled them. something yeah, differently, that's and right. that happens. That but whatever a was lot. stamped, a lot, a lot. <laughs> no. whatever was stamped by <coughs> Cheryl and submitted right. is is the record. Okay. So that's why I say don't repeat the hours in those minutes because we don't want a conflict right. with the previous so, approval. Okay, you, everybody sure. agrees with sure. what this is? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Thank it's you. Up to you man. No, but I'm saying legally, right? You got to you can't have it in two spots. It's a problem. True. Yeah, we'll do what happened with the Luther. Uh, okay. The ZBA decisions in 8 weeks or permits in 2 years. Mr. Mendoz makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I was Mr. Young, all in favor? Aye. I abstain. I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, I abstain. Eight weeks. Okay. It doesn't matter what Mr. Mr. Dell and Ms. Yolk were not here. It was lost in court. Okay. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, just on that letter, uh, take me off yeah. that letter. Uh, it says when Dennis called me, I said, no, the ZBA, the, the decision trumps my permit. He said, once that person spoke, I know a lot of the LGBT library. Yeah, I if I could comment on that also, it's, I would recommend you do it as you as a resident as opposed to this. Okay. As a board, because it is kind of stepping aside of what this board's purview yeah, is. Okay, we then, then, then we won't write a letter. But I'm not generic, but just say we, we studied or examined to reduce any problems. But when you send that to the town board, it's going to be referred to the traffic advisory uh, board. But what happens is the traffic advisory board sends a letter to all the neighbors inviting them to a public meeting and then. Yeah, I'm going to put it up. Well, that in one way is closed. Closed section, and they'll set it. Yeah, I'm going to put it up. 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 Yeah, I'